Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sharif Al-Gamal and today we are going to uh, continue our videos about structural analysis and uh, this video will be talking about moment distribution and we'll be talking about frames with no side sway. So within this video we'll learn how to analyze frames with no side sway and how to draw the bending uh, moment and what is the difference between frames with no side sway and frames with sway. So let's just start together. First of all, let's talk about the types of frames. We have two different types of frames. The first one with no side sway. And the second one, when we have a side sway. For the frames with no side sway, the calculations will be similar to the calculation of beams. So you can check uh, previous videos of using the moment distribution method to analyze beams. And with the second type of frames, when we have side sway, so additional calculations will be required in such case. And I'm going to prepare another video in a very short time to help you to uh, understand and analyze frames with side sway using the moment distribution method. So let's start with the frames with no side sway frames. For no side sway frames, we may have two different types. The first one, when, it, when we have an existing support, so let's say we have a frame like this. The frame is not symmetric, and even we have a horizontal force here. So this frame, if we don't have this support, it will sway. Sway, it means it will move horizontally here at the level of the beam. So if we have a frame which is not symmetric, and if we, or if we have horizontal force, and there is a support, like pin support, like this support here that will prevent this frame from movement so in this case we can assume that this frame will have no sway no side sway because of the presence of support uh, there is also another case when we have symmetrical frames such as this frame here we can see that this frame is symmetric in geometry also loads uh, here is the load is symmetric so under this symmetry in geometry and load no side sway will occur in this frame. However, if you apply any horizontal force here, or if you change the support, one fixed and one pin support, or if the load is uh, unsymmetric, so of course, in such a case, we'll have a side sway. So when you don't have a support here, you may have a sway unless or except if you have everything is symmetric. In this case, even if you assume the sway, you will find that no sway will occur. However, for any other frame, if you have any loads here, uh, it is not symmetric and you have a support, this support will prevent the frame from moving horizontally. And in this case, we have no side this way. So these are the two types that you may face when you have a frame with no side this way. Symmetric frame, this shape or any other shape, but everything is symmetric. Or if you don't have a symmetric frame, but you have a support that will prevent this movement. Again, there will not be any sway. So let's understand this by solving an example together in details. Within this example, we'll be learning how to analyze the frame, get all the moments, and also we'll learn together how to draw the bending moment diagram and how to get the maximum moment at the zero shear force. So just continue with me and you will learn this step by step. So is this example here, what is given determines the internal moments at the joints of the frame. The EI is constant. So the EI for all uh, frame elements, columns or beams, this is constant. Uh, so we don't need uh, to be worried about the EI. So we have here a fixed support at A. We have a pin, pin support at D and at uh, E. Uh, we have four members, A, B, B, C, C, E, and C, D dimensions as you can see here five six and four meters here what load we have we have uniform load at uh, bc the value is 45 kilonewton per meter and we have a horizontal force here which is 60 kilonewton exactly at b so let's start by solving this one as we learn it in the moment distribution we uh, can start by getting the stiffness factors so we have to calculate the stiffness factors for each member for the four members so for member AB, it is fixed and fixed here because continuous. So it will be four EI over L. So four EI is constant, so we can remove it. So it will be four over L. Four over L, which is five meters. This will give us a value of 0.8. 
let's move to BC. Again, continuous from here, continuous from here. So it will be 4 EI over L, so 4 over 6 equals 0.667. Then let's go to CD. This fixed from this side and pin. So this would be a special case, which is 3 EI over L. So it will be 3 over 5, which is L. It gives us 0 0.6. And the last one, again, fixed at C and pin at E. So it will be 3 EI over L. It means 3 over 4. So it will give us 0 0.75. So we got the K for all the members. And these are the values of K. From this case, we can get the distribution factors at each joint here, at each side of the joint. So let's start by joint A. Joint A, this is a fixed support. This is a, a special case for the fixed support. Of course, the distribution factor equals zero, okay? Then let's move to joint B. Joint B, you will have two distribution factors, BA and BC. So to get the distribution factor BA equals K for BA divided by the summation of K uh, at the joint B, which is 0.8 plus 0.667. Let's do that. So 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.8 plus 0 0.667 equals 0 0.45, uh, 545. And then the distribution factor BC equals 1 minus distribution factor of uh, BA equals 0.455. As you know, the distribution factor at the joint submission will be equal to 1. Once we finish joint B, so we can now move to joint C. Joint C here, uh, here, how many members we have? We have three members. We have CB, we have CE, and we have CD. So let's get the distribution factor of CB equals again K, CB, divided by the submission of the K of the joint. So submission of the three values here. Let's do that. So it will give us 0.333. Then we'll do the same for CD equals 0.6 divided by the summation of all stiffness factors at this joint. So we get the value here, 0.297. And then the last one, again, 0.75 divided by the summation of all of them. So it will be 0.372. And the, the summation of the three distribution factors here at the joint C should be equal to one. Then the last two joints, uh, which is the pin support at D and the pin support at E, this is again a special case. At any pin support, the distribution factor should be one because it is pin support. So distribution factor D, uh, C and distribution factor E, C equals to one. So we finished the first two steps, the calculation of the stiffness factor, distribution factors. These are easy steps. But it is very important when you solve a problem because if you did any mistake here and such values, it will affect all your uh, moment values and you will have wrong answer. So let's conclude the distribution factors. We, these are the distribution factors that we calculated uh, together. Now the next step is to uh, get the fixed end moments. For the fixed end moments, we can divide the frame into different pieces like this. So we have AB, BC, CE, and CD. For member A, B, and C, D, and C, E, we don't have any load, so the moments fixed and the moments equal to zero. If someone will ask about this load, this load will affect or will result in any fixed end moment? No, because it is exactly at the support. If this load was at the middle here, of course, it will result in some fixed end moment at A, B, and B, A, but because it is exactly at the support, so it will not result in any fixed end moment. So in this case, we have only one member, which is member BC. It is fixed, fixed under uniform load. So this is a famous case. We can get the value using the fixed in the moment table. You can see the value here is WL square over 12 in both sides. But in the left side, this is counterclockwise rotation. So it will be minus 135 WL square over uh, 12. And on the other side, the same, but it is clockwise, so it will be positive values. Therefore, the fixed end the moment here, BC equals minus 135, and CB is 135. Once we finish the fixed end the moment, we can now uh, start making the table to make the distribution and carry over and get the, the moments at the end. So as you know, the uh, table always will start by three, uh, rows, the first one will be the joint, then the member, and then distribution factor. So for the joint, we have how many joints? We have A, B, C, and D, E. These are the joints. Don't forget that joint D and joint E, both of them are pin supports. 
okay so they will not take any carry over and the value here at the end will be zero moment uh, because they are pin supports so members we have member a b then for joint b we have two members b a and b c this b a and b c for joint c we have three members c b c uh, e and c d so c b c d c e then here we have joint d and we have a joint e all of them has one member but don't forget that these are pen connections or pen supports so pen supports they will not even you can remove them from the table because you don't need them they will not carry take any carry over and they will aff not affect your results let's put the distribution factors zero then we have 0 0.545 0 0.455 then at joint c we have the three values here we'll put them and for the pen they are one and one for fixed in the moment we are ready now for the fixed in the moment all the values are zeros except here for member bc and ce bc and ce and here there is a mistake that some students are doing uh, when you put the values just be concentrate and put it in the right place don't put it somewhere here some uh, students will put minus 35 135 plus 135 in the wrong place so here bc so this is bc minus 135 and then cb is plus 135 all the rest will be zeros then we can continue but just before we start distribution and carry over just i'm reminding here these are pink supports and for pen supports, we will not take any carry over. So the result here at the end, the moment will be equal to zero. So you can remove them from the table, not to get confused. Now let's start making the distribution. For the distribution, you have to make the distribution within the joint itself. So you have joint B here. You have to get the submission of the fixed end moments. We have here the submission is minus 135. So we get the opposite sign of that. So it will be plus 135 multiplied by the distribution factor to get the value here. It will be plus 73.6. Again, multiply it again by 0.45. Uh, it will be 61.4. The submission of the all values here to ensure that your answer is correct, this should be zero because here minus 135, this should be plus 135. So the submission should be zero. Again, we will repeat this at joint C. So the submission of fixed end moments will be plus 135. So we will use the opposite sign. So it will be minus 135 multiplied by 0.33. Again, multiply by 0.29, multiply by 0.37. You will get the fixed the distribution moment. All of them are minus. And again, the submission of all moments here should be zero. Once you finish the distribution step now we can make the carry over carry over step as you know the carry over is 50 percent of the moment and the carry over should be from one joint to another joint so it should be from joint b to joint a so at this thick line here this will be the carry over again from joint b to joint c we have carry over member bc will give to cb and member cb will give to bc so again don't make a mistake and make carry over within the joint itself the carryover should be between the joints, from one joint to another joint. Why we don't have, have carryover here? Because this pen support, no carryover. So I advise you just to remove it from the table and you keep A, B, and C only. So let's put the carryover. It is 50% of the moment with the same sign. So 73.6 divided by two, it will be 36.8. Again here, 44.6 and minus divided by two, it will be minus 22.3, 61, it will be 30.7. And again, we can make the distribution. So we will come back again to uh, joint B, minus 200, minus 22.3. Okay, so the result here will be plus. So plus 22.3 multiplied by 0.54, it will give us 12, 10 positive. Again, the submission should be uh, zero. And again here, 30.6, or 30.7 at joint C. So the result here will be minus all of them. So 30.7 and minus multiplied by 33.33, it will give us minus 10, minus nine, minus 11. And again, we are going to repeat the carryover steps. And then the distribution as we did in the uh, first two steps here, just to repeat the work until uh, carryover and then the final thing will be again distribution 
Okay, and then we can stop. Someone will ask when we need to stop. We can continue and making carry over. Yes, we can do that. But four steps will be fine. So this is the first distribution, second distribution, third distribution, and this is fourth distribution. This will be enough and you will reach like a good accuracy. You can see here the values are about 0.4 compared to a moment here 135. So it is less than 0.5%, less than, less, uh, less than half percent of the initial moment. So this is good accuracy. Once you did four steps like this, now we can get the submission of the moment. So get the submission of the moment starting from the fixed end the moments until the end. So 36.8 plus 6.1, plus 1.3, it will give us 44.3. We will repeat this for the member BA, 73.6 plus 12.2 plus 2.8 plus 0.4, so it will be 89, and here it will be minus 89. Yes, for the same joint here, BA and BC, left and right, it should be the same value with a, a different sign, okay? It should be the same value with different signs. The submission here should be equal to zero. For joint C, we do the same for all the three members and we get the values here. And again, the submission of this moment should be also zero. Once we get the moments, so it is done. If it is required from you to get the values of moments only, so you can stop here. But in this example, uh, I want to uh, teach you and how to draw the bending moment diagram, okay? Because it is very important to draw the bending moment diagram. To do that, these are the values that we have in the previous table. These are the moments. So what to do? We need to draw the frame and divide it into different elements. And then we'll put these values. If you have a positive value in this table, it means a clockwise rotation. And if it is a negative value, it means counterclockwise rotation. So let's start by AB. AB is here at this point. So it is positive. Positive, it means clockwise rotation, and the value is 44.3. So it is very important to put it in the right direction. This is positive. It means a clockwise rotation. Then let's move to BA. Again, it is positive. It means a clockwise rotation, and the value is 89. Let's move to BC. It is negative uh, 89. It, negative, it means counterclockwise rotation, and then we put it 89. Once you put this... Uh, uh, arrow here in the right direction. It is counterclockwise. You don't need any more to put here minus because you know if it is counterclockwise rotation, it is minus 89. Once we do that, it, you don't need to put the minus here anymore. So then let's move to the second part here, the second side of the element CB. The moment at CB here is 115.2. It is positive. Positive it means clockwise rotation, and this is 113.2. Then let's move to uh, CD. CD is minus 51.2. So it is at this point. Minus, it means again counterclockwise, and you put it with 51.2. You don't need to put the minus anymore. And then CE, CE again, it is minus. So it is counterclockwise rotation, and the value is 64. So this is very, very important to put the moments here in the right direction and put the values here. And now we are ready to make our drawings. Let's make the drawing here. So to make the drawing, we can draw the moment on the whole frame as one frame, or we can divide the frame into different elements. It is easier for many students to draw this in uh, uh, segments. So I'm going to do that. So let's start by the first uh, member, which is member A, B. So here, this is the moment. You see the direction of the moment. You can draw the moment on the head side so where is the head side here the head side is going to the left so we will take horizontal line here to the left side it is 44.3 44.3 then at the top side the moment is going to the right so the head of the arrow here is to the right so we'll draw the moment in the right direction and the value is 89 from this point to that point since you don't have any load on that member so it will be a straight line to connect them and by doing that you finish the moment in the first member member ab let's go to the member bc we'll do the same here i have a moment 89 and the arrow is down so i will go down with 89 the other side i have 115.2 and it's down so 115.2 in between you have uniform load so if you have uniform load you know that the moment will be uh, parabola so we'll draw a parabola 
and what is the direction of this parabola it will be opposite to the load if the load is pushing down this parabola will be going up okay we will need later to find the maximum moment here at the zero shear we will keep it at the end but let's continue by drawing the moment in other elements so we have member cd we'll do the same you have a moment going to the left side so it is 51.2 and at joint d it is a pin support so of course at pin support the moment will be zero you need to connect them because there is no load with a straight line here the last member which is ce we have a moment here 64 again it is going down so you will put it down like that it is 64 and at joint e it is pin support so it will be zero and there, because there is no load here so you will make a straight line between 64 and zero and this will be the bending moment okay so this is the bending moment diagram almost finished the last thing to do is to get the maximum moment and the position the distance x here to get the maximum moment let's learn together how to do that to do that we need to deal with this uh, member bc so i'm going to draw bc here i got the resultant of the load which is 45 multiplied by the total distance six so it is 270 and to uh, get the uh, distance of zero shear, we need first to get the reaction in one side. Let's get the reaction by. To get the reaction in by, I will take the moment at the other end at C. So let's take the moment at C. I will take a moment here, assuming that counterclockwise rotation is positive. When you can, you want to calculate a reaction, so it doesn't matter which direction is positive or negative. You can assume any one of them, uh, and just use it to get the reaction. So here, I assume like this counterclockwise as positive. So I will take a moment here. So if I take a moment, I have positive 89 and plus 270 multiplied by three in the same direction. So 89 plus 270 multiplied by three minus 115.2 because in the opposite direction minus by multiplied by six equals to zero. We are going to solve this one and get the by. So the by will be 130.63 kN. Once we found this by, we can find the distance for zero shear. To get the distance for zero shear, it is a very easy step in case of uniform load like that. So the x for the zero shear equals the reaction divided by the uniform load. So the reaction here is 130.63 divided by the uniform load here, which is 45. So the answer is 2.9 meters. So we know the distance here for the zero shear is 2.9 meter. So the last thing to do to finalize this moment, to get the moment at the zero shear, to get the moment at the zero shear, we'll take a moment at the distance X. Okay, we take a moment at the distance X. So by section method, so it will be 130.63 multiplied by x minus 89 minus uniform load here multiplied by x square over 2. All of that will be 100.6 kN meter and therefore we'll be able to find the moment here. So within this video we learned how to uh, analyze uh, a frame with no side this way, draw the moment diagram and also get the distance of zero shear and the maximum moment at the zero shear value. Thank you for watching. And in the coming video, we will be uh, talking about frames with side sway. Thank you and goodbye.